It's a great joy to welcome you here this morning, to say good morning to you. Welcome back to those of you who are here present in the building as our congregation, as the choir as well here in fabulous numbers today. Welcome to all of those who are joining us live on stream or watching this as a recording. It's a real joy to hear the buzz of conversation, to see these pews filled with people, well actually filled, that's not quite the right word, but with a congregation. Um, doing what this building was made for, a place for the people of this parish to gather, to do the choir singing, and there are some parts of the service today which are sung to a setting that has been written by our Director of Music. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From the one who is, who was, and who is to come, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. Now is the time to wake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. On this, the second Sunday of Advent, we give thanks for the prophets, people past and present, who have given us a so people who challenge the injustice of the present. Last week we lit the first candle on our Advent candle stand and we're going to invite the Daniel family to come forward to light the second candle. At least if you'd like to come up with your mum and dad, Rihanna and Robert, it'd be great if you could light our second candle for us. The second candle represents the prophets, people like John the Baptist that we're going to hear of in our reading, also the prophet Isaiah who's in our first reading this morning. Thank you very much, Elise. Thank you. So let's pray as the second candle is lit. Loving God, your prophets, as we stand alongside the marginalized of your world, that they may find new strength and hope in you. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us now confess our sins, calling to mind in a moment of silence those parts of our lives where there is darkness in our thoughts, our motives, or our attitudes, or our actions. Lord Jesus, your forerunner John calls us to repent for you are near. Christ Jesus, by your dying and rising, you have given us the promise of eternal life. Jesus, you are the way, the straight path leading to the kingdom. God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The choir are now going to sing for us our first hymn, which speaks of the ways in which God has spoken to us both in the past and today.
As we come to our collect, our special prayer for today, let Almighty God, purify our hearts and minds, that when your Son, Jesus Christ, comes again as Judge and Saviour, we may be ready to receive him, who is our Lord and our God. Amen. My sisters and brothers, in this holy season, we prepare ourselves for the Lord's coming. Let us now be open in heart and mind as the Lord comes to us through his holy word. cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Sion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in the Please stand for the gospel. <laughs> the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and do with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May the word 
words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable to God. or for someone else. And just hoping doesn't actually often achieve much. Sometimes it takes action to achieve hope. And this week we heard it was work by doctors, scientists, volunteers, and many, many other people. It was a journey with choices to make, wrong turns, and trusting sometimes just to keep going. Now, it might surprise some of you to hear, but I don't always watch highbrow BBC4 TV programmes. I know, it's a shock. I have been known to partake in the occasional um, reality-based television programme. And there might be one or two of you here who watch Strictly Come Dancing. Anybody? Yes? Oh, it's not just me then, that's good. But my other favourite show is actually where they go into more details about the dances and the contestants. So where am I heading with this? What does Advent 2 and Prophets have to do with Strictly Come Dancing? Well, there's a bit of a joke in the programme about whenever people may mention the J word, which of course is journey. The great reality TV cliché of the person on their time on the programme has been on a journey. And yet, as much as it is mocked, you often do see the journey that they've been on, the difficult times that help them to improve, the things that they had to overcome to become better, are constantly on a journey, journeys of discovery. And that's what I mean, is I don't mean just like walking around, but actually a journey of experiences, like most reality TV programmes. And as Advent is a time of preparation, it seems like a good time to think about our own personal journeys and the hopes and the things that we're aiming for. And both our readings today have a feeling of new starts. In Mark's Gospel, we're right at the beginning, chapter 1, verse 1. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We have such a great announcement about Jesus, and then we hear nothing about him. But what we hear about is people to Jesus, preparing us for the journey with Jesus. And Isaiah is again at the beginning. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1. But wait, I hear you cry if you weren't all wearing masks and sat separately. How can 40 be the beginning? Well, actually, this, I'm not going to go into a great in-depth biblical explanation, but for those who don't know, there's some thought that Isaiah was actually written about three different voices and three different people. And the book divides into three sections. And chapter 40 is the beginning of the journey far away from their usual lives, their usual way of living. And just as it was for the people hearing the words of those prophets and the journeys that they were on, it's what happens to us on our own life's journey that shapes who we are, and importantly, the decisions we make. Our experiences can become our future. And just as those people listened to those prophets and it had an impact on them, then they can still have an impact on us. So what we're going to do is think a bit more about our journeys that we've been on and where we're heading to. And I would say this isn't just an adult thing. journey are you on at the moment? And what hope do you have for the end of your journey? Perhaps it's a journey through Advent, trying to improve yourself. Is it a journey through a difficult time? Perhaps at home, at school or work? Is it your journey of faith to become closer to God? Is it a journey on your own or with others? 
So as you just think of this journey that you're on, I've got a selection of road signs, and with each one I'll pause and give us all a moment to think about what may be that sign. So to begin with, we have a U-turn. Perhaps as we think of John's words, to repent, to turn around and change direction. Are we on the right journey to the right destination? Well, now we have a one-way sign. Is the journey a one-way street with time, when times are tough, tough? Do we need to be reminded to keep going and not to be discouraged? As Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Is it a word of encouragement for yourself or for somebody else? And so the road's narrow. And is the road ahead of you narrowing? What things up ahead might be tricky that you need to be aware of? Is there some difficulty or challenge ahead that you need to be prepared for? Or roadworks on your journey? Is there something slowing you down? Or do you feel like you've come to a stop? What could turn the traffic light green? What work needs to be done? Or if maybe your journey and your journey to hope is a new journey, how do you prepare for that journey? As both readings said, a voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Or are you at the crossroads? when you need to decide a different path, a different route? Are there decisions that you're facing? What choices need to be made? And so as we think of all our different signs, just think again about the journey that you're on. What are you struggling with? Which sign leads you to do what's next? The prophets were signs leading to Jesus and beyond, leading to the coming of the kingdom of God. So I wonder, what signs has God given to you? And as we continue on our journey through Advent, whenever you see a road sign, think again of what we've said this morning, thinking of your life journey, or maybe your relationship with God, what signs do you need to follow? But also, like the prophets, what sign are you called to be to other people? Is there someone in need of extra direction on their journey? What messages are you called to share with them? And as we journey to once again remember the hope that in each of our lives, building God's kingdom. Amen. And so for our prayers this morning, we're actually going to use those same signs again. When I say, Lord, show us a sign, please respond and bring us hope. Lord, show us a sign and bring us hope. Loving God, we pray for our world, for those in need, those who feel they have no hope. Help us to turn things around, to follow your ways and make a positive change. Lord, show us a sign and bring us hope. When we're on the right path, help us to keep going to not be distracted. May we focus upon you, the way and the truth and the life.
Lord, show us a sign and bring us hope. We pray for those who are facing difficulties, especially those that are unwell. And we bring to mind any we know of in need of our prayers. We pray in particular for John Wilkes, Felicity Phillips and Maxine Clark. Lord, show us a sign and bring us hope. Lord, be with all those who feel lost. We pray particularly for the families of those who are grieving and for the friends and families of Leslie Windsor, Danny Boyle and Gabrielle Edwards and in a year's mind, Kenneth Sellers. We give thanks for their lives for all those that they inspired and were signs of hope for. Lord, show us a sign and bring us hope. And Lord, help each of us to make the right choices. May our journey through Advent bring change in our own lives and the lives of those around us. We give thanks for all those working in the medical industry. And with the rollout of the vaccine, we pray for wisdom. And as the prophets have guided people through the centuries, may we be guided too, to welcome you into our hearts. Lord, show us a sign and bring us hope. Amen. Thank you, Phil. The theme of signs continues now as we're invited to share a sign of the peace. Can I invite you all please to stand? In the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So choosing whatever method is your favourite, whether it's a nod of the head or a wave or, or this, um, share God's peace with one another. As bread and wine is brought to the altar, so we pray. Lord, look upon us in mercy, not in judgment. Draw us from hatred to love, and make the frailty of our praise a dwelling place for your glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and it is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For when he humbled him, the way of salvation, 
confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. For dying, you destroyed our death. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Rising, you restored our life. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascent, sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of John the Baptist and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. pray that each day we might be watchful for the signs of Christ's coming amongst us as we pray using the words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy this bread, to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Just a reminder of how the distribution of Holy Communion will take place. Please stay where you are in your seat, and either myself or Phil will bring the sacrament to you. And you will be receiving in one kind only, but the full sacrament of communion is contained within just the bread. We're not permitted to speak at the moment of uh, giving Holy Communion. And so in a few moments, I will say to us all the body of Christ, and we can all respond together, Amen. 
so that we have made that affirmation before we then receive in silence. God's holy gifts for God's holy people, the body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Again, to be our judge. Give us grace, so to imitate him in the humility and purity of his first coming, that when he comes again, we may be ready to greet him with joyful love and firm faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together following the words on the screens. Loving Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, has come to us in word, spirit, and bread. Make us holy and bring us to perfection when we stand before him as he comes to judge the living and the dead. Amen. Shop, which explores the basics of the Christian faith called Soul Space, is going to restart again in the new year. It's a 10 session workshop and the big change is that we're going to be doing it purely online. Um, well, actually not purely online, we are hopefully going to have a physical gathering of the participants to meet one another, but the sessions are going to be done online. It begins on the 11th of January and you can register for the workshop uh, using the link that you'll find if you've received our email pew sheet, there's a link there, or if you go to our website you can fill in a form via there. It's really designed for people who are uh, in, in the very first stages, to use the J word <laughs> from Phil's sermon, the very first steps of their journey of faith, perhaps, just asking questions, exploring. Um, there's a few people here uh, today I can see that have done the course uh, and I know really enjoyed it and appreciated it. But also if you're somebody who's been uh, involved with church, has been a Christian for, for some time, but you're feeling a bit stale and you're not sure about the basics and when someone like Phil says, did you know that actually in the Bible, the book of Isaiah was written by three different people? You think, I didn't know that. I wish I knew a bit more. Then perhaps it's something for you. It's not an in-depth Bible course, but it is a chance to look at the basics of what Christians believe, what it means to be a Christian, and what it means to belong to the church. So I would encourage you, either yourself, or if there's somebody you know who asks the sort of questions, maybe you could recommend the course to them and forward the link to them. The December edition of Trinity Times has now been published. This is now mainly an online publication, so if you go to the website, you can read Trinity Times there. Normally, our December Trinity Times would have a full list of all of our Christmas services. Unfortunately, when it went to print a couple of weeks ago, we still didn't have firm uh, plans um, that, that we knew would be able to work because of the changing situation, of course, that we're in. However, we're in the position now where we've almost got the final plans, and those are going to be published fairly soon, so do look out for those. There'll be a mixture of pre-recorded services on. As you leave this morning, just we want to keep everybody safe. Just please, uh, a reminder about maintaining social distance. Um, part of the joy of coming to church, for those of you who are here, is of course being able to talk to one another afterwards. And we don't want to stop you from doing that, but just be mindful, please, uh, of keeping social distance, two metres is further than we often think it is, uh, and also not congregating uh, in aisles or on the pathway outside the church, because that's quite busy with people wanting to pass through, uh, and we want to make sure they haven't got to negotiate groups of people who are chatting. So just be mindful uh, of uh, where you are and what you're doing after the service. Thank you. Those of you who are on our mailing list who have been sent the link, uh, you've got plenty of time to get home, make yourself a brew, uh, and find your comfy chair log on to Zoom Coffee and you can chat at your leisure then with those who have been here this morning but also crucially those who've been watching online. We look forward to catching up with many of you shortly. The first couple of weeks of Advent uh, are more about Christ's second coming than celebrating his birth at Christmas and as we enter this second week of Advent so we're going to hear now the choir sing for us uh, my favourite Advent hymn, Lo He Comes with Clouds Descending.
Well, St. Paul tells us that one of the gifts of the Spirit is self-control. The Spirit must be abundantly at work today with us having to exercise the self-control not to join with the choir singing that hymn. Thank you so much. Let's stand to receive God's blessing. God the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son, give you grace to prepare for eternal life. Amen. May God the Son, who comes to us as Redeemer and Judge, reveal to you the path from darkness to light. May God the Holy Spirit, by whose working the Virgin Mary conceived the Christ, help you bear the fruits of holiness. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And so we're sent out into the Come, Lord Jesus, in power and glory. Come, Lord Jesus, in wisdom and truth. Come, Lord Jesus. Go in peace to prepare the way of the Lord. In the name of God.